In this video, we are going to introduce antiderivatives briefly and then look at some examples. So basically, antiderivative of a function f is g, if and only if derivative of g is f. So like we have here, if derivative of g is f, then we can say antiderivative of f is g of x plus c. This is the notation we use for antiderivative. Antiderivatives are also called indefinite integrals or simply integrals. So this notation, antiderivative of f of x dx is read as antiderivative or integral of f with respect to x. So this part denotes with uh, respect to which variable we are doing the antiderivative. Now let's look at some examples. So here we want to find antiderivatives of these three functions, 3x squared, x squared, and cosine of x. So whenever we do antiderivative, just because we defined antiderivatives using derivatives, some formulas and derivatives can be very helpful. So I have these formulas down here. So we will use uh, whichever is helpful. Okay, for the first one, so to find antiderivative of 3x squared, we ask derivative of what function is 3x squared? Let me write that down. So we ask derivative of what function is 3x squared. So basically we, we are asking derivative of what function will give us 3x squared. Now using our knowledge from derivatives, the function must be x cubed. If we apply this formula here, so antiderivative of 3x squared is simply x cubed. So from here we can say um, the antiderivative of 3x squared is x cubed and we can add the constant because the derivative of constant is zero. So basically here I can say because derivative of x cubed plus constant is 3x squared. So since derivative of x cubed plus constant is 3x squared, the antiderivative of 3x squared is x cubed plus constant. Now let's try the second one. So in this one, we are trying to find antiderivative of x squared, exactly the same idea. So we want to look at, so this is for number two, we want to look at, uh, derivative of what function is x squared. Now, if we have x cubed, we know derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. So if we have x cubed, we get 3x squared, but we have just x squared. So what we can do is we can put x cubed by three, since we want x squared and not 3x squared. So from here, I can say integral or antiderivative of x squared is x cubed over three plus constant because derivative of x cubed over three plus constant is x squared. So this answers the second part, uh, the antiderivative of x squared. Now let's look at the third function, cosine of x. So here we are asking derivative of what function is cosine of x. So here we are asking derivative of what function is cosine, x, cosine of x. Now looking at uh, these formulas, we have derivative of sine is cosine of x right here. So therefore we must have integral of 
cosine of x equals sine of x plus constant because I can say, because derivative of sine of x plus constant is cosine of x as given by this formula. So this answers the third part. Okay, next we'll look at uh, uh, deriving some formulas for antiderivatives. So basically, as we just saw, we can derive all the formulas for antiderivatives from derivatives. So we know derivative of constant is zero. So from here, we can say that antiderivative of zero with respect to x is a constant. Since derivative of constant is zero, antiderivative of zero is a constant. Okay, next we know that derivative of kx is k. So this simply implies antiderivative of k with respect to x is kx plus constant. So for example, if we have um, antiderivative of two with respect to x, then that would that will simply become two x plus constant. Same thing with any other constant. If you have uh, 500 dx, so antiderivative of 500 will be 500 x plus constant. So let's look at this derivative formula. Derivative of x to n equals n x to n minus one. So from here we can say that antiderivative of n x to n minus one dx equals x to n plus constant. So we got formula for n x to n minus one over here, but it would be nice if we can have formula for just x to n. So for that, let's uh, divide both sides by n. Then the derivative formula first will look like x to n over n equals x to n minus one. So this one will give us integral of x to n minus one dx equals x to n over n plus constant. And since we want x to n over here, I'm going to replace n minus one with a new variable. So let's say let uh, n minus one equals m. So if you do that, then this side becomes x to m dx equals, on this side we have x to n. So if we let n minus one equals m, then that simply means n equals m plus one if you add one to both sides. So this will look like x to m plus one divided by m plus one and plus constant. So this is the well-known um, formula for integrals called the power rule. Power rule for integrals. Let's quickly do a couple of examples using this formula. I'm going to clear the board so that we can have some space to do some examples. Let me put down the formula we derived up here. So we said it's x to m, integral of x to m is x to m plus one over m plus one plus constant. So for example, if we have, um, if we want antiderivative of x cubed, so in this case, m will be three. So it will look like x to three plus one divided by three plus one plus constant. And this will come out to be x to three plus one will be x to four over four in the denominator plus constant. As another example, let's say we have um, 
square root of x. So let's say we have square root of x. So whenever you have a radical sign like this one, um, the first thing to do is to try to convert this to exponent form. So, you know, you can write square root of x as x to one half. So we can write this as x to one half dx. So now we can apply the formula because this is exactly of the form x to m with m equals one half. Then that will give us x to one half plus one divided by one half plus one plus constant. Now the rest is just a simplification. One half plus one is three halves on the top, divide by three halves in the denominator plus constant. And then I can, uh, just to make it look nicer, I can flip the denominator and bring it to the front. So I can make it two third x to three by two plus constant. So this is the antiderivative of square root of x. Let's look at uh, one more example, similar to what we just did. So if we have uh, something like, if we want something like Antiderivative of uh, let's say fifth root of fifth root of x dx. We can use exactly the same idea because fifth root I can write as x to one by five, and then I can apply the same formula with m equals one fifth. So this becomes one fifth plus one over one fifth plus one plus constant. Then I can say this is uh, one fifth plus one is six fifths over six fifth plus constant. So this will come out to be five by six x to six by five plus constant. So this is the integral or antiderivative of fifth root of x. So now let's look at the next formula we have here. So we know derivative of sine x is cosine x. Then from this, we can quickly derive an integral formula. We can say antiderivative of cosine x is sine x plus constant. So quite straightforward. And next uh, formula from derivatives is cosine x equals negative sine x. So from here, I can say that integral of negative sine x equals cosine x plus constant. Now we want integral of just sine x, not negative sine x. So, but I can quickly multiply both sides by negative and that will give us sine x, integral of sine x, equals negative cosine x plus constant. This is the antiderivative formula for sine x. The next formula we have from derivatives is tangent x. Derivative of tangent x equals the second square of x. So from here, I can quickly say integral of second square x dx equals tangent x plus constant. So these are the formulas that we just derived. Although we didn't talk about exponential and log functions and these, uh, the other uh, derivative formulas, we get all of these formulas by just using the formulas for, for derivatives. Now using those formulas, let's look at some examples. So first let's look at uh, number one, we have antiderivative of nine plus x dx. So we know using this formula here, antiderivative of nine is nine x. So maybe before that I can write this as nine dx plus 
x dx, so I can split this into two integrals. Antiderivative of nine is nine x plus antiderivative of x is, so we can use this second formula here with n equals one. So it becomes x to one plus one over one plus one. And then we can add constant plus constant. So I can go one step further simplifying this. 9x plus x square over 2 plus constant is the antiderivative of 9 plus x. Let's look at the second one. We want to find the antiderivative of 9 e to x plus 3. Again, I can write this as two integrals. 9e to x plus integral of 3. Now I can pull that 9 out to have just e to x dx plus 3 dx. Now we ask if uh, we have antiderivative of e to x as one of the formulas. If we look at the list of formulas, we do have a formula for antiderivative of e to x. So this will become nine in the front e to x. And you can leave that plus constant out for now because we are going to get constant from the another integral also. So it will be plus, and we know antiderivative of three is three x plus constant using this first formula here. So our k is three. So we get three x plus constant. So this is the antiderivative of nine e to x plus three. For the next one, number three, we have, we want to find antiderivative of one by x minus two sine x dx. So again, I can write this as two integrals, integral of one by x minus integral of two sine x dx. Now for the first part, again, we see if we have a formula for that and luckily we do. So if you look at this formula, we have antiderivative of one by x is natural log of x. So this becomes natural log of x. And we need to make sure we have absolute value sign here because um, natural log of a negative value is not defined. Minus, I can pull that two out. And we have a formula for, for antiderivative of sine x right here. So that would be negative cosine x plus constant. So I can put that here. So negative cosine x, and then I can add constant at the end. So I can go one step further simplifying. So this becomes two cosine x plus constant. So this is the antiderivative of the third one. Let's look at the fourth one. We are trying to find antiderivative of six e to x plus cosine x. Again, I'm going to write this as two integrals six e to x dx plus cosine x dx. So for the first one, we have six times antiderivative of e to x for which I can just use this, use this formula here. So it becomes six e to x plus cosine x antiderivative of cosine x is given by this formula over here, which is simply sine x plus constant. So this answers the fourth uh, part over here. Let's look at the fifth function. So in five, we want to find antiderivative of 10 secant square x plus six x. So again, I'm going to split this into two, in, two integrals. 
secant is 10 secant square x plus 6x. So I can pull that 10 out. And then I look for formula, antiderivative formula for secant square of x. We do have a formula for that, which is right there. So that would be tangent x plus six times integral of x using this formula, the power rule. We have x to one plus one over one plus one. So this becomes 10 tangent x plus six times x squared by two. Sorry, I forgot plus constant over there, plus constant. And I can go one step further trying to simplify this. So six over two is three, three x squared plus constant. So this is the antiderivative of the fifth function here. So let's look at uh, the sixth one. In this one, we are trying to find antiderivative of x to 81. So for this one, we can simply use the formula for antiderivative of x to n. And it looks like our n would be 81. So x to n plus one must be 81 plus one over 81 plus one plus constant. So quite straightforward. So this becomes x to 82 over 82 plus constant. Now let's look at the last one, the seventh function. So here we are trying to find antiderivative of 4x to 8 plus e to x plus sine x dx. Now I can write this as three integrals. The first one, four x to eight, plus second one, e to x, plus third one, sine x. For the first one, we have four times integral of x to eight. For that, I can apply this formula because that is of the form x to n with n equals eight. Then it will look like x to eight plus one over eight plus one. So done with the first one. Plus second one is simply e to x. So e to x, we have a formula right here. e to x itself. Plus third one is sine x. And we have a formula for that also. So it is simply negative uh, cosine x plus constant. So I can go one step further simplifying uh, some of these terms here. So we have four over eight plus one, which is four over nine times x to nine plus e to x minus cosine x plus constant. So this is the antiderivative of the seventh function.